Hello everyone, how are you doing? Uh, welcome back from Thanksgiving. Going to make a quick video here just to give you some instructions on how to do the final training exercises and the elevator pitch samples for the final speech. Okay, so in unit five, you see the speaking exercise here. Uh, did you ever change your mind about anything? It'll happen. And this is just for you to be able to debate both sides. You have letters A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, which is six letters. And you have two propositions, right? A yes side and a no side. So in total, you speak about each one for a minute. It would be two minutes times six is 12 minutes. So you have roughly your 13 minutes of practice there. So I will give you an example of how to do one of them so that you see how it works. Now remember, for all these exercises, because we are gonna be standing up for the remainder of our speeches, as always, I would recommend that you also stand up for these because as you can see, swaying and all that definitely makes a big difference. Okay, so I have my timer here. Okay, let me use a different timer. Alrighty, let's see here. Switch it to a minute. Okay, there goes a minute, you can see. All right, so letter A, it is more important to believe in yourself than to have people believe in you. All right, so that's one side that I'll take. I'll talk about it for a minute. Remember, practice it as if it were a speech, have an attention grabber and begin. You're on your own. Oftentimes in life, people will jump on the bandwagon. When you are successful, people will like you and people will always believe in you. But sometimes the moment trouble comes or the moment that there's some sort of adversity, people will jump ship and they'll no longer believe in you. It's incredible how even if you can be so successful, say picking a stock 10 in a row, the moment you get one or two or three wrong, suddenly people won't believe you anymore. So as much as it's important for us to care what other people think because we still live in a communal society and we do rub off each other, it's really important that you truly believe in yourself more because how can other people believe in you and continue to believe in you if you waver in your own self-belief? You gotta believe in yourself more. So that was a minute. And now let's go to the switch side here. It is more important to have people believe in you than to believe in yourself, okay? And so we'll take uh, this one instead. You've heard this phrase before, fake it till you make it. In many ways, that is absolutely true. It doesn't really matter so much how we feel about ourselves. It's more important how other people feel about us. We might think that we're the worst salesman, but if someone out there believes that we're great, then guess what? We'll be selling our products off the shelves on Black Friday, all through the new year. So as much as it's important that some people might say that you got to have your own identity and your own self-esteem, the truth is because we live in a communal society, cast your own self thoughts away. If people perceive you to be successful, that's more important because if people can see you as successful, they're gonna treat you as one. And in the case as sales, you know, you could think you're the worst in the world, but if everyone believes you're great, that's what matters most because who cares about how we feel? It's how other people were treating us. All right, everyone. So that's an example of how you switch up both sides. I spoke for a minute on both sides and then congratulations. Uh, that is two minutes of training. Do this for letter B, C, D, E, F, and G. And letter D is the fun one because you get to choose your own debate statement and topic. Okay, so congratulations. That is speaking exercise unit five, which is training video number nine. Okay, and the final one, as we go to unit six now, is one where you're just going to talk for 13 minutes. Wow. Okay, that's the one where we know that when you talk to your friends, uh, you can be totally just, you know, yapping away and you don't know how the hour goes. Well, in this particular case, 
your speaking exercise is to tell us about an event or place that you definitely don't want to be too late for, or you will have regrets. Uh, some people will say it's a favorite concert. Uh, other people say it'll be a, a certain place, so on and so forth, okay? So if you think about it, you have to think of one specific story. And I would like you to be able to include as many specific details as possible so that it's truly one where you would have to avoid cliches because there's no way that you can talk, 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 talk without all general, without being specific with all generalities. Okay, so I will give an example of something that I definitely don't want to miss. And that would be, let's say the following. Now, am I going to speak for a full 13 minutes here? No, but I want to start it off so that you understand uh, how that how that would roll around. And you want to pick one one event, right? One event that would make it easy for you to be able to continue to talk about without starting to jump ship. So for example, if I were to say talk about one movie, I want you to talk about the full movie, not suddenly jump in talking about other movies or other shows, right? Stick to one part. So uh, before you get started, right? Uh, think, you know, what is that one event you definitely don't want to be late for? And again, you can't think too long about it because I could be thinking forever. So I'm just going to start now. And again, take it as if it were a speech. And in this video, I'd like you to try to, I definitely want you to not just stand the whole time. Um, use your body language, use your voice, uh, use your hands, um, you know, use props if you have it just get into it. This is your final training. You're going to be speaking for 13 minutes here. Um, all of you have been doing great, but great in a standing way that's completely uh, flat. Uh, let's see some movement. Uh, let's see some animation a little bit. This is your last one for 13 minutes. You're telling a story about an event that you don't want to miss. So here we go. 195. That was the goal I set for myself for all the countries in the world that I wanted to visit. I'm currently at 105, so I got 90 to go. And I hate to say it, but I had to completely change my entire life since March of 2020. It's already been eight months. And in the past, in the last eight months, in April, I was supposed to go to Istanbul, Turkey. And then in May, I was going to go to Granada. And then for the entire summer, I was already going to go and backpack the entire, entire West African coast. Senegal, Ghana, Sierra Leone, you name it, getting inward to Nigeria. That may have been at least 15 countries right there. Factor in how... <laughs> Now, after the break, I would still be traveling the winter. Numerically speaking, I would be at the end of the year, which is just a month from today, approximately 130 countries. Now, in addition to not being there, I don't know how long this is going to take. Realistically, I'm not going to be able to travel this winter break or the spring break, who knows how summer would take like. So one event that I definitely don't wanna be late for, and I realize I should have said this way earlier on. So one event that I definitely don't wanna be late for is getting the COVID-19 vaccine. I will be willing to be one of those guinea pigs to take it the first time because I have read articles that in order for you to get allowed into countries, not only do you need your passport, but you may need a certificate that's saying that you have been vaccinated with COVID, uh, vaccination of COVID-19 with antibodies. Otherwise, they won't take you. Now, when I travel, and then we're going more and more into the story now, so I am in. I should have said, you know, the specific purpose, right? I should have said it early on. I should have said the following, okay? Every country in the world, that's my goal that I wanna be able to visit. And one event that I don't wanna be late for is 
the availability of getting the first batch of vaccines. I don't care if it's from Moderna or Pfizer, wherever it is, I want to take it because I don't want to miss out on my opportunity to see the world while as I'm, while I'm as young as I'll ever be. Okay, now having said that specific purpose, I would keep on talking. And man, I got to talk for 13 minutes over here on this one topic. So you got to possibly get into your motivation about it, right? Um, here, as you can see from this shirt, I actually got this shirt when I was up in Nepal, in Kathmandu, the capital. And I was preparing for my Mount Everest base camp hike. And I saw these walls of beautiful, beautiful shirts that were that were personally sewed. And I really like this shirt here uh, with the circle because it has every religion of the world. And then I asked them to make this for me here, which is the flag of Taiwan, where uh, my journeys originate from. And I also wanted this shirt because it's actually one of those um, like Jersey shirts. So I was able to wear it as I was up there. So if I sweat, it's not gonna be cotton and it's, it's not gonna help me. It's gonna help me not catch a cold and stay warm. So again, notice how I am using the uh, outfit to be a part of my speech over here. And then you can see that everything is green here. You've seen, a number of green screen videos that I've made over the course of the semester. And in addition to that, it just really, really, really helps me be in any environment that I want to be. Uh, sometimes I'll just choose a picture of myself from the trips that I've been to, and then I'll just put it up. And I, wow, this reminds me of my time when I was in Antarctica uh, in December of 2016, four years ago. Uh, this is, you know, the generic one you see all the time. This is the Northern Lights. Uh, I've been to Iceland and four days I was there, four nights I was there. Uh, it was too cloudy. It was too poor of weather and it got canceled every single time. So I was upset about that as well. Uh, so I've been, yeah. And then this photo, of course, you know, um, you've seen the camel photo. Uh, this was from uh, Puskar in India. Um, and then this photo here, this is from Mongolia. So you've seen these before. Um, this is the war, uh, being a Zulu warrior. And um, I like to, yep, this is Rome. Okay, that's me over there uh, inside the Colosseum, right before the whole pandemic hit, actually. So I'm just really happy that I got a chance to fit that all in. Okay, everyone. So as we come to the close now, I've been talking for not even six minutes yet. This exercise here, you got 13 minutes to talk about something really specific. Uh, in terms of travel, right, because I'm talking about taking the vaccine, I like to be able to continue these sorts of memories here. As you see, um, this is a bunch of photos that I've put together from my travels around the world. Uh, there's me jumping off the pyramids. Uh, that's me on the letter D of Amsterdam. Uh, that is the Berlin Wall right over there. Uh, that wall right here is actually the wall where Gladiator with Russell Crowe was filmed. And you have a whole bunch of other ones lined up there. But one that I'm really proud of showing, and I, oh, that's uh, CM Reap, uh, Cambodia. Um, this is uh, the photos of all my classes that I've ever taught up until maybe four years ago when I've lost... Um, the space on my walls to put down. So a lot of classes and then uh, more, oh, sorry, uh, even more classes there. Okay, that's um, that's me going gorilla trekking out in uh, Rwanda. So, anyway, oh my God, hold. I did not, I did my uh, wheels for my standing desk. All right, nothing happened, thanks, okay. Okay, so what was I saying? Um, right. I would like all of you to submit your final photo of yourself. I will make a collage of it and that will be our class photo. I've taken a class photo since the beginning of time in September of 2009. I have taught more classes than countries I've been to about 111 classes or so now, uh, counting all of you. So I would definitely, uh, this is my pride. 
Uh, you're all my pride, everybody. Uh, there's so much blessing to being able to do public speaking and do travel. Uh, it's the two passions of my life that I've just been able to fuse together. So I wanna thank all of you for a incredible semester in regards to the timing of our world and the timing of your lives as well. So remember, this is just the beginning of your speaking journey for the rest of your life. And all the work that you put in, it's just gonna like just fill you up and pump you up for the next level, I guarantee it. I will make another video where all this is actually put into use. I've just been going through a lot of renovations as you can see, uh, but it's gonna be all together and will be dynamite for that. Wow, this is still just eight minutes and 30 seconds long. Okay, so have fun with this final exercise of 13 minutes and keep on going with it. Now, to keep this whole thing to 13 minutes, I want to get to the elevator pitches now, okay? The elevator pitches. You have 30 seconds, and I want you to come up with not one, not two, not three, but 10 different elevator pitches. And that is going to be your finale because you cannot uh, write up 10 elevator pitches on the spot because, um, well, I guess you could, but I don't want you to be uh, reading off anything. So um, we're gonna have a few uh, litmus tests over here. So first and foremost, let me just go over the structure for all of you over here. Okay, you're gonna have five steps. Okay, first step is you have an attention, oh man, I'm having the glare again, okay. First step is to have an attention grabber. That means don't start with your name, hello, my name is something, right? That's not an attention grabber. Um, the, Use one of the attention grabbers that we talked all semester for. I recommend to not use the triple question in full format because that's gonna eat up a whole lot of your time. A simple attention grabber of two seconds might just do it. Honesty, that's what I'm about, okay? Now, talk about who you are, okay? Now, who you are should represent your entire name, the fact that you're a student, what you might be majoring in, or any little bit of a tad bit experience that you might have, right? So you might say, for example, public speaking. Hello, my name is John D. Lynn, and I'm a professor at XYZ University for the past 10 years, right? That's who you are, or who I am in this case. The third step, third step is what you are applying for. Now, you can apply for a job, you can apply for a a raise, you can apply for a scholarship or an internship. I just ask that you actually apply for something that's real. And the best feeling you can have is actually being able to get what you want and use this as a push to actually do it. What I hate, and uh, many people can agree, is when people say they want something and then when they get it, they don't want it anymore. Example. Right. Um, a lot of times students will say, oh, gosh, like, why do I have to take this class? It has nothing to do with what I want to do in life. Well, fine. This is the for perfect opportunity for you to actually take class time and focus on what it is you want and have all the tools and resources to actually go out and get it. OK, so what it is that you're applying for for is why. Why should they hire you? Why should they pick you? Uh, it's not because you need the money or because you need the experience. It's what unique qualities do you provide for them that's going to make that difference, okay? And finally, is an unforgettable ending. Not unforgettable endings are, thank you so much for your time. I hope to hear from you soon. Um, can I sit down now? I'm done. Uh, no, oh my gosh, did I mess up? Okay, um, let's, let's avoid that. Now you're submitting uh, 10 attention grabbers. I'm sorry, you're sending in 10 of these. If you happen to mess up, just take it all in one take, okay? I do not want uh, 10 different clips of you. You have it live rolling. Uh, maybe you mess up uh, live. Fine, let's see that mess up. Um, let's see those um, bloopers, you call them. I just want to make sure through the end of it, I'm able to see 10 that are satisfactory, okay? So, Ideally, you practice them, and then when you're ready to do the 10, you do the 10. Okay, so again, 30 seconds is the time. A big part of this is your aura, 
right? How confident do you look? Uh, your, your presentation in general. I'll be doing this uh, later on with a actual suit and tie, so for you to see. But these are the uh, these are the steps that you'll be looking at. And now, while holding this up, I will set my timer to 30 seconds. This is such an annoying sound. I know. There's no other way I can do it. All right, 30 seconds. Okay, so again, I don't want you to make anything up, but I want you to actually use the experiences that you have and see how you can go for something. All right, so let's just say I'm applying to be a public speaking professor at a different country, which is actually something that I'm interested in. Okay, so here we go. Traveling the world. That's what I love to do. My name is Professor John D. Lin, and I am a public speaking professor here in New York City. Combining my love for speech, teaching speech, and traveling around the world, I would like to apply to XYZ University in your country. I understand that the fear of speech is not limited to the US, it's a global issue. If you hire me, we can bring unity to everybody. So that's 30 seconds. Was it the best? No, but um, you get the point here, right? I have an attention grabber, which is not how low my name is. I don't end with just a thank you very much. Uh, I do talk about who I am. I'm applying specifically for something at a specific place. And I am telling them a little bit of a preview of why I would be good for that job. So that's one elevator pitch. Trust me, you do not want to write all these and try to memorize them, okay? Because here's the next one I would like you to do. In your videos, I'd like you to be able to prove that you are not reading. So what I will ask you to do is, do I have it here? Uh, no, I don't have it here right now, but I'll just simply uh, do one of these, okay? So now I can't see anything. And I will do an elevator pitch, okay? So here you go. overcoming a generational issue. My name is Professor John D. Lin, and I teach public speaking in America for the past 12 years. I would like to apply to XYZ University to teach in France, because I understand that the fear of public speaking is not limited to America, but it's around the entire world. With my extreme travel experiences, I understand that I can work with the global community to bring us all closer together and communicate the way that we were meant to be. All right, so I just uh, obviously didn't see anything, okay? And that was my second one. Uh, to make a third one, maybe this time I'm gonna ask a question instead. And this time, I don't know, maybe I'll just cover my arm this way. Uh, I just wanna see that you're not reading off the screen and that you're proven that you can do it. So uh, what is that thing? The, the dab or something. Uh, yeah, I think so. All right, so here, just do another one here. And the best way I would recommend you to practice this is to not get so bored of applying for the one job or the one internship you want to do. Um, in the, well, I suppose in this video, um, I'll just say, apply for some random jobs just for fun, okay? A dinosaur fossil collector. Include your own experiences and see how that goes. So I'll give you an example of that one. Ancient history. That's essential to understand where we are today. My name is Professor John D. Lynn of Public Speaking, and I'm applying to be a dinosaur fossil collector here in the Natural Museum of Art. Understanding rhetoric and its history from ancient Greek and Roman times, I understand the significance of also collecting fossils because in the end, it's about how we evolved as people and as a planet. Through my appreciation of the ancient arts and study, I know I would be a great dinosaur fossil collector because I like to preserve what's most important, our history, our words, and our actions. Hire me today, and we will have a more successful, harmonious museum. Okay, so here are the random ones that I think would be great practice for you. Okay, and these were the exercises that I had normally do in our class, but we haven't had a chance to do because we are in uh, COVID-19. So this here is penguin. Okay, so penguin. Uh, first job is I'd like you to practice saying that, you know, you're going to be a penguin babysitter. Okay, that's a practice job for you to do. Do an elevator pitch, practice what it's like to be a penguin babysitter. Okay, secondly, uh, do a speech 
practicing how to be a dinosaur mascot and have fun with this one. All right. Roar! Okay. You don't want someone who's completely scary, but you want someone who's willing to come out of their shell. Hello, I'm Professor John DeLina, public speaking. And over the last 12 years, I've been helping students get out of their shells so that they can have the roar confidence that I know that you want your patrons and party people to have. If you hire me, this place is going to be fun. It's going to be uplifting. And that's exactly what you need for people to come into this pizza shop. Okay, so have fun with it. Um, you know, when you're doing the penguin, you know, toddle, 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 toddle. Wow, isn't that cute? And we want to preserve these penguins for the rest of our lives, right? So hi, my name is Professor John D. Lin, and I'm here to tell you that personalization and care is quality that I always put into my classes, and I will devote that to the penguins. I understand that you have to be punctual and appreciate these penguins and my trip to Antarctica, along with my addition of teaching, certainly has prepared me for these experiences. Let's go see penguins. Okay. All right. So have fun with those. You have dinosaur mascot, you have penguin babysitter. Heck, apply to be the mayor of New York. Okay. Apply to be the principal of your high school. Just practice. 30 second clips. Okay. All right. So there you go. Um, we discussed the elevator pitches, right? 10 of them. Okay, you can do this. Okay, there's no way you're going to cheat this uh, when you're when you're covering up on a couple of them. Okay, have some body language. Uh, this is the last one. Dress the part. Um, we discussed the final two training exercises, nine and 10. And finally, your final speech is a tribute speech to all your virtual classmates. I combined all of you into the three courses so that you can get a chance to socialize and get to meet people as much as possible. And virtual public speaking would not have been possible without this virtual audience, okay? I am so happy that I'm making this video for you as opposed to just making this video for nobody. Right? You've been making these videos for somebody, right? Not just yourself or your audience at home, but for all your virtual classmates. So give them all a shout out for making this happen. Maybe we'll all meet one day. And that is my time for these videos. I'm going to upload this now. And I hope that this helped you out because some of you were asking for some more details and some examples. So here they are. Okay, I've missed all of you since my last video. I enjoyed the informative videos and I am on the clock and the final submissions that may have came a little bit later. Cool, everyone. All right, so you'll see me again. And if you have any questions about this video, then just email.